good evening everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with dr murli bharadwaj so we finished neurology in general medicine and also respiratory anatomy embryology physiology pharmacology and pathology related to pulmonology respiratory system so today we are going to see the end of microbiology if opportunity is there we will also review few more things in cardiology which we were half the way so that is a plan for the day almost 10 online students thank you for joining the session every day we'll all meet together study together study few points and forget them tomorrow am i right girija right so we study we forget once more we re study that is a part of the game called uh, neat pg preparation so there is 24000 points which is available as a notes which is given to you uh, when you join us so please use that tick mark the points that you are bound to forget for the last 30 days so that's a plan and only listening this class will not be enough you should take every opportunity to do the revision then only we will remember all right doc but what i am presenting is very focused points sure shot points 24000 points that you need to master so doctor let's make the start what is a prion disease crixfels jacobs disease prion protein is a altered protein it is not dna it is not rna it lead to a rapidly progressive dementia usually sporadic typically and it can be bovine spongiform encephalopathy which is also called mad cow disease kuru is uh, the acquired prion disease eh? so now we are at this point right last time now what are the normal microbiota that are there in our mouth skin and that can contaminate uh, and sometimes lead to infective endocarditis also in the skin we have staphylococcus epidermidis in the nose staphylococcus epidermidis and also aureus then uh, oropharynx you have viridans group streptococci dental plaque streptococcus mutans in the colon you have bacteroides fragilis and e coli in vagina there is lactobacillus along with e coli and group b group b streptococci you remember group b lead to the development of neonatal meningitis so there is a condition called prom what is prom premature rupture of membrane whenever this happens then this vaginal bacteria group b streptococci can lead to the development of uh, the uh, lead to the development of neonatal meningitis very good to see sadaf mariam and many more nowadays our uh, whatsapp group is becoming fully pregnant we have almost all 400 students in different groups so every day around 3 400 new students are joining the whatsapp group so our thesis is every day studying together for two hours saturday sunday is a little longer ultimately finishing all 24000 points identifying those 4 5000 points that we need to do the revision in the last moment so doctor staphylococcus and bacillus cereus what is their specialty they lead to food poisoning they both have typically preformed toxin that's the reason their incubation period is less than 6 hours bacillus cereus only 1 hour staphylococcus aureus within 6 hours because they are preformed toxin 
is what you need to remember. So this is how the bachelor series grows on the sheep blood agar. And this is the gram positive bachelor series. The organism is what you need to remember. So one of the favorite question, sir, do we need to write these points or notes will be provided, says Ramila Rajal Banwal. Banwal bede, kuch bhi fikar ne ka jarurat nahi hai. So we got our first uh, paid customer, right? Free class is actually a marketing uh, jadu. Ultimately, we want you to buy the notes. So 24,000 points will be provided as a 2,000 pages notes, 24,000 points. If you are in Hyderabad, you will get those notes. Otherwise, we will courier to your home. And all these PowerPoints and videos will be available on the online MBBS.com video library. So please call 9000-868-356. And uh, you will get the opportunity and the link to pay. So, yeah. What is the source of food poisoning? One of the favorite question. Reheated rice, wife is a neurologist, husband is a cardiologist. She doesn't have time to cook hot food for you. Honey, in the refrigerator, one week old food is there, biryani. That to order from Swiggy, not prepared by her. So reheated rice, bachelor series. Then improperly canned food, raw honey containing spores is botulinum. Clostridium perfringens is reheated meat. E. coli O157H7 is undercooked meat. Listeria monocytogenes, dully meat, soft cheese. Salmonella, poultry, meat and eggs, commonly in the history. Somebody ate uh, meat, eggs, etc. And uh, Always you should look at the timing of the food poisoning. Onset of the symptoms between eating and getting the loose motions. Staphylococcus aureus, meat, mayonnaise, cheese, custard, preformed toxin. And Vibrio parahemolyticus and Vibrio vulnificus, when you go to Goa for honeymoon, you will eat undercooked seafood, raw seafood. Endu chepalu will lead to the Vibrio vulnificus and Vibrio parahemolyticus is what you need to remember. So you should remember Vibrio vulnificus predominantly causes wound infection from the contact is what you need to remember. You are sure that we did not finish these points, right? Okay. Now, doctor, one favorite MCQ in the exam is Bloody diarrhea. Somebody had a dysentery. What are the organisms that lead to the dysentery? What are the organisms that lead to the diarrhea? You have to be 100% sure. So bloody diarrhea can be caused by Campylobacter, Entamoeba, Histolytica, Enterohemorrhagic E. coli, Enteroinvasive E. coli, and non-typhoidal Salmonella. Salmonella typhi, Salmonella paratyphi is there, no? Paratyphi also is known to be leading to bloody diarrhea. Shigella, Ersenia. One, two comments about them, which are the buzzwords, which you need to remember. Campylobacter is comma-shaped. It is comma-shaped, S-shaped. It grows at 42 degrees Celsius. We call campfire. Very famous word, no? Campfire. You'll remember that. No? That's the reason you can remember 42 degrees Celsius. Some stupid way to remember. Then entamoeba can lead to amoebic dysentery, liver abscess. Then entero hemorrhagic E. coli. What is that strain called? O157H7 strain. Leads to hemolytic uremic syndrome because it releases the shiga toxin. 
that lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome what is the type of anemia called as uh, girija maha what is maha microangiopathic hemolytic anemia because there is a formation of platelet rich fibrin clots that don't contain clotting factors through that the rbc is negotiating in the small vessels and it become broken down what is the hallmark of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia when you look in peripheral smear broken rbcs what are they called cystocytes are the hallmark so typically enterohemorrhagic ecoli leads to shiga toxin production and hemolytic uremic syndrome is what you need to emphatically remember for the tomorrow's exam so what is the best way online students can do while attending the class is you can also punch some nice points that come to your mind so every day evening is like a get together huh uh, study mates get together to study together then salmonella the non typhoidal salmonella it is lactose negative flagellar motility it has a animal reservoir especially poultry and egg eating can lead to that so any salmonella is gram negative gram negative in gram negative you have lactose positive lactose negative fermentation wise so lactose non fermenter is the salmonella and flagellar will enable the salmonella to swim don't confuse salmonella with vibrio vibrio is cholera salmonella is typhoid then shigella shigella is also lactose negative very low infectious dose infectious dose a little also can lead produces shiga toxin and the human reservoir only and it lead to bacillary dysentery there is no other reservoir and like salmonella has got a even salmonella you have a human reservoir right typhoid mary she made everyone to continue to get the typhoid hmm? so ersenia enterocolitica this can lead to day care outbreaks and what is a very important feature caused by ersenia ersenia can lead to mesenteric lymphadenitis our mesentery is there no gut lymph, lymph nodes it lead to mesenteric lymphadenitis what is the other name given for the mesenteric lymphadenitis nurse maid syndrome once upon a time the nursing students used to get mesenteric adenitis more often there is some reason for that so nurse maid syndrome and because mesentery how does the mesentery run from your right uh, uh, iliac fossa towards your left uh, subcostal area so that is the reason right iliac fossa pain will be there that's the reason mesenteric lymphadenitis is confused with appendicitis that's the reason it is called pseudo appendicitis is mesenteric lymphadenitis caused by ersenia enterocolitica is what you need to remember so doctor these are the ersenia enterocolitica organisms this looks like a microbiology for neat pg preparation looks like uh, going for a curtain shop for buying the new curtains for the new house after marriage after becoming successful right so but don't worry nobody will give this and ask you to identify ersenia that is too much if they ask like that you need to do 3 years md right mbbs level where will you do so that is what doctor dysentery then comes watery diarrhea what are the organisms you'll remember for watery diarrhea once more please don't forget doctor campylobacter enterohemorrhagic e coli entero invasive e coli salmonella non typhoidal shigella and ersenia enterocolitica lead to dysentery bloody diarrhea watery diarrhea 
it is the clostridium difficile clostridium perfringens enterotoxigenic e coli is what it is invasive and uh, hemorrhagic e coli are all dysentric then protozoa like giardia and cryptosporidium then vibrio cholera and very commonly viruses lead to diarrhea now one to comments about each of them clostridium difficile lead to pseudo membranous colitis if you take a lot of antibiotics and uh, proton pump inhibitors pan 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 right and uh, that lead to development of watery diarrhea clostridium difficile occasionally it lead to bloody diarrhea perfringens clostridium perfringens you know it because it lead to gas gangrene but it also leads to watery diarrhea then enterotoxigenic e coli lead to travelers diarrhea delhi belly you gone for uh, india may uh, long travel means one of the person in the family will become sick so we are scared about traveling uh, sometimes in india right so uh travelers diarrhea is enterotoxigenic e coli it produces one heat labile and heat stable toxin that already you know then what is vibrio cholera comma shaped organism rice water diarrhea sometimes infected sea seafood also can lead to it then what are the viruses that lead to diarrhea norovirus what is that norovirus common in developed countries rotavirus is very common uh, in uh, developing countries like india lot of infantile diarrhea is all rotavirus but mothers want a quick relief of the diarrhea in the child they say give one more antibiotic doctor try another antibiotic doctor my baby is having loose motions but you will be telling it is a rotaviral diarrhea what is the use of giving antibiotics right so enteric and adenovirus these are the three viruses what are they norovirus rotavirus and enteric adenovirus lead to watery diarrhea is what you need to remember so this is we are almost finishing microbiology so these are all a quick summary of what all that we read earlier and all the earlier points totally 600 points are there in microbiology you still have the notes and you are revising that right uh, very good very good so doctor what are the common causes of pneumonia favorite mcq in entrance so in microbiology you will get uh, in entrance exam proper microbiology you get about 6 uh, to 7 mcqs doctor if you properly revise this 600 points now 6 out of 6 you will score and come out because examiner cannot innovate at all what will he innovate he can't discover a new virus from the mars planet or jupiter planet and ask you know now the question is this 600 points some naturally you will remember some unnaturally you have to remember until entrance okay ha huh. what are the common cause of pneumonia if it is a neonate less than 4 weeks children 4 weeks to 18 years adults 18 to 40 40 to 65 65 plus the organisms differ you need to remember neonatal pneumonias are all group b streptococci and e coli e coli is gram negative streptococci is gram positive then 4 weeks to 18 years you should think respiratory syncytial virus mycoplasma chlamydia trachomatis then chlamydia pneumonia in school aged children then streptococcus pneumonia also right the other day you remember in uh, pulmonary pathology we studied uh, lobar pneumonia bronco pneumonia what are the organisms that lead to lobar 
that lead to bronco that lead to interstitial viral infections lead to which type of pneumonia girija interstitial pneumonia beautiful lobar is all streptococcus pneumonia very commonly then comes adults in adults we have streptococcus pneumonia h influenza anaerobic organisms whenever you aspirate after having a full drink eh, and sleep without washing mouth the next day morning all your gut biryani went into lungs led to anaerobic aspiration pneumonia viruses mycoplasma where do you get bulging fisher sign doctor which pneumonia bulging interfisher will uh, interlobar fisher get fluid klebsiella klebsiella pneumonia and what do you get bulging fisher sign factor x and factor v are required for the growth of which organism factor x is hematin you remember factor x factor v are required for h influenza hemophilus influenza hemophilus influenza can lead to epiglottitis whereas the cru is because of virus not bacteria epiglottitis versus cru which is emergency where you need to intubate the kid epiglottitis because in epiglottitis the swollen epiglottis looks like a thumb sign and what do you get in cru laryngotracheobronchitis steeple sign remember don't lose the fourth the neat pg preparation is like a rajput uh, warrior trying to conquer the india it's like alexander you are conquering 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 and you are losing the kingdom also because you will uh, you won a kingdom at most what will you do as alexander you beheaded that king then you gave to one of your general and you are progressing towards uh, further invading the country sir after some time your general was killed back by the local people and once more you lost the kingdom same thing happens with need pg material also you should as you keep on revising it you will remember it right until entrance is over every day i will be loading you with about 150 200 points every week around 1000 and every month around 4000 points how much you will hold the kingdom like the alexander the great is all about the fun of winning and losing the entrance exam right doctor so that season kindly do revision and next time when i say very steeple sign crew where is the thumb sign which is due to h influenza and which is due to para influenza virus crew all right so whenever a guy is alcoholic abuse overuse then what are the causative organisms leading to pneumonia klebsiella anaerobes because of the aspiration what are the anaerobes pepto streptococcus fuso bacterium prevotilla bactinoides fragilis these are all what anaerobic organisms tomorrow day in and day out you will be managing pneumonia cases whether you are a obstetrician gynecologist physician dermatologist you should know how to manage pneumonia of your own parent who is aging right so there's a reason alcoholic overuse lead to klebsiella and anaerobes injection drug users are another special population in them streptococcus pneumonia and staphylococcus aureus so what is this sign called bulging fisher sign at least now if you tell me it is because of klebsiella and pneumonia right two three times if you revise na you'll become authority what else even uh, tomorrow when you see maybe two three cases with bulging fisher sign uh, uh, practically it is as good as seeing it over here 
but you need to know that you need to nail it down that point you need to nail it down agree so 24000 points doctor 2000 pages notes today only please join the score app and you get all these videos archived and this 2000 pages notes photocopied and sent to your home you can use it for revision so doctor what are the causative organisms of pneumonia commonly with aspiration this is the typical aspiration aspiration is more common in the right lobe right hmm? so anaerobes is what you need to remember now comes a typical pneumonia what organisms lead to a typical pneumonia mycoplasma chlamydia legionella and respiratory syncytial virus cmv influenza and adenovirus these are the things you need to remember that lead to a typical a typical is also called walking pneumonia you remember because the patient's x ray looks dangerous patient is happily walking around that's called a typical pneumonia caused by mycoplasma chlamydia legionella and the viruses like respiratory syncytial virus cmv influenza and adenovirus the another special population in whom you need to know is cystic fibrosis patients so what is the problem in cystic fibrosis doctor there is a cftr a gene which has undergone cystic fibrosis gene is uh, mutated because of that the chloride channels are affected because of that the sodium retention is poor so they lose lot of sodium in the sweat so a cystic fibrosis baby will be tasted salty by the mother when she plants a kiss to the child and because sodium chloride is not absorbed water is not properly reabsorbed and that's the reason all the secretions become very thick and viscid and that lead to bronchial obstruction leading to the development of pneumonia and what is the organism very common in the cystic fibrosis patients leading to the pneumonia doctor pseudomonas staph aureus streptococcus pneumoniae and burkholderia sepacia have you heard this organism burkholderia sepacia pseudomonas staph aureus and streptococcus pneumoniae now tell me how much your memory is there girija anti pseudomonal cephalosporins are what anti pseudomonal cephalosporins cefepime septazidim you remember we had one class on antibiotics all right ha huh. so that's what you need to remember now what are the causative organisms in the people who are immunocompromised patients do we get immunocompromised very commonly yes today is all the world of transplant renal transplant liver transplant bone marrow transplant even lung also right if you are a neat page topper you can even provide your brain uh, for transplant to another guy who don't uh, who did not read this 24000 points all right so i think this is a good uh, business now future may come where they do gene uh, therapy for neat pg preparation the guy who got uh, dr murli bharatwaj gene uh, if we do transplant uh, finish you get all 24000 points into your brain enough now that's more easier right i'll also become like a swami ji please pay the fee i will provide you vibhuti put that vibhuti you will remember the 24000 points huh? so good good so doctor staph aureus enteric gram negative rots fungi viruses pneumocystis they are very common in immunocompromised 
ഹെൽത്ത് കെയർ അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് ന്യൂമോണിയ മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് തിങ് ഈസ് ഹൗ കെൻ യു പ്രിവെന്റ് ഹെൽത്ത് കെയർ റിസോർട്ട് ന്യൂമോണിയ ക്ലീൻ ഹാൻഡ് വാഷിംഗ് ഇഫ് യു ഡോണ്ട് ഡു ദാറ്റ് വൺ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് അനദർ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് യു ആർ ദ കോമൺ ട്രാൻസ്മിറ്റർ വെക്ട ഈസ് ഹ്യൂമനസ് ക്യാപിറ്റസ് right homo sapiens so staph aureus pseudomonas and gram negative rods they are very commonly associated with ventilator pneumonia now what is the cause of post viral pneumonia after viral infection what are the organisms streptococcus pneumoniae staphylococcus aureus and h influenza very common after getting viral infection it resolved superimposed bacterial infection comes and that is streptococcus pneumoniae staphylococcus aureus and h influenza is what you need to remember then copd patients the other day we studied a lot about what is read index you remember it is the ratio between the mucosal layer to the entire mucosal layer to entire mucosal layer ah entire width of the tracheal uh, bronchial uh, wall so that is read index you remember right ah very good. i keep asking middle middle to remind you like uh, uh, one of my student uh, very naughty guy ravi was his name i still remember um ravi is now he did psychiatry md psychiatry he used to write uh, in those days gajani movie came i am neat pg gajani he got a tattoo <laughs> so one day he has he has shown me sir how is my title sir neat pg gajani if you teach don't expect me to answer in the class sir aap ravi ravi get up and ask questions sir i'll be scared sir so i tattooed that i'm neat pg gajani i those days it was not neat pg it was all india pg hmm? uh, gajani so that uh, i forget questions so very common the gajani syndrome is very common so then comes streptococcus pneumoniae h influenza and catarrhalis and uh, pseudomonas these are the organisms specially in copd so lot of times mcqs are asked what are the typical organisms in each of the scenario alcoholics immunocompromised cystic fibrosis etc etc so you'll remember it right now meningitis what are the common causes this another hot mcq every entrance you go newborn baby 0 to 6 months group b streptococcus e coli and listeria 6 months to 6 years meningitis is due to streptococcus pneumonia nisseria h influenza type b and group b and enterovirus 6 year to 60 years you don't remember this nobody will ask this as the question above 60 people will ask you once more streptococcus pneumonia nisseria h influenza group b and once more listeria so how do you treat meningitis doctor empirical treatment anybody who has meningitis you give ciprioxone and vancomycin if you are suspecting a newborn baby listeria or above 60 listeria listeria highly responsive to ampicillin therapy so add ampicillin if listeria is suspected otherwise empirical treatment of all meningitis would be ciprioxone and vancomycin while you are waiting for the culture culture report now what are the viral causes of meningitis so viral causes of meningitis are all called aseptic meningitis aseptic meningitis so you should remember once more you remember na between bacterial meningitis versus viral meningitis csf glucose is normal where decreased where viral is normal bacteria is decreased which is a lymphocytic predominant csf response ha huh? lymphocytic tb tb is very lymphocytic predominant response even viral pneumonias are also 
lymphocytosis is predominant. That's what you need to remember. Once more, that uh, table, because tomorrow when you are a postgraduate in MD, no? General medicine. Every day, at least three to four uh, CSF uh, lumbar punctures is a routine day in and day out job. That's the reason this PG is what they do, no? A kacha intern mil gaya to unko sikhate. Then the intern will say, Anna, thank you, Anna. You give me chance for that pushing that needle and then the fluid is coming. Wow, what an orgasm. First time I got it, Anna. Then this fellow will say, all right, come tomorrow. No, no, Anna, we have to go for beer, he will say. No, no, it's all right. You come tomorrow. Then he'll say, bed number 14, bed number 18, bed number 21, 26. All these four beds go and do the lumbar puncture, right? So people teach you so that their donkey work is taken care by you. That's good, no? You know, that's all uh, skill set is being taught. So the moment you join postgraduate, three things, doctor, intubating patients, putting a center line, right? And doing lumbar punctures, taking out the pleural effusion fluid and acidic fluid, putting an intercostal drainage tube. These are the five tasks any postgraduate should be taught. No, nothing else should be taught. Internship also, only these five important interventions, center line, effusion strap, Intubation, then uh, central line, uh, central line I told, right? Then, um, so these are the tasks. And what is life without uh, getting a hands-on opportunity to do that? Uh, if you're surgical posted, putting sutures and assisting and doing episiotomies, wow. Once more, life does not give that opportunity. You have to do it in your internship whenever chance is there. So doctor, what are the viral causes of meningitis? Enterovirus, especially Coxsackie virus. Huh? Yes. Very good, doctor. We are happy that quarter century, 22 students attending. So once more, I like to invite all of you, tell your friends also. There are 24,000 points that you need to prepare. I will hold your hand, do revision every day until your exam and see to that, we will do the revision of all these 24,000 points. And these 24,000 points, we offer it in 2,000 pages notes. And after this session is over, we remove the video and then archive the video on the website, onlinembbs.com. So these notes, we will courier to your home. So you can do the revision and out of these 24,000 points, you need to identify what are those four or 5,000 points and do the revision in the last moment. That's all. Simple secret of getting the top rank in entrance. But the problem is what? If you are only having video library, you don't get motivation. You need a teacher who will sweat every day who will shout on the top of the voice and then revise along with you, do the bhajan every day. Yeah, we will do that. And tell your friends, live YouTube broadcast in the evening every day. And Saturday, Sunday, we will have four or five hours of class. If you follow this on the YouTube religiously, nobody in the world will stop you from becoming the topper. Okay, doc. Then, varicella joster virus is also very common cause of meningitis and encephalitis. So identify this doctor, what is this uh, organism? India ink preparation leading to the capsule becoming prominent. What is that called? Cryptococcus. India ink staining is a very common cause of meningitis in HIV. Then, if you look at the group B streptococcal meningitis, nowadays it has decreased. Why? Because anybody who has a PROM, premature rupture of membranes, immediately they are receiving the antibiotics against the group B 
streptococcus. That's the reason incidence has decreased. Then why the incidence of H influenza meningitis decreased? Because Hib vaccine, hepatitis vaccine, when a newborn is born, no, he will be thinking how many vaccines came into the planet Earth. In my last life, so many were not there, right? So really also we'll punch, punch, punch so many uh, hepatitis vaccine. So because of this hemophilus influenza vaccine, the hemophilus influenza meningitis has come down. Now, doctor, mother of all MCQs. Batti marne wala vakta gaya hai. Janab, every neat PG entrance exam, one question on the what type of meningitis you need to remember. Bacterial. The moment you put a needle, you will uh, identify it. With a very high pressure, CSF will be spurting out. High opening pressure is bacterial meningitis. Increased polymorphonuclear neutrophils. Right? Neutrophils are predominant. Protein is increased. Glucose is decreased. That is what? Bacterial. In fungal, opening pressure is also increased. Fungal lead to increased lymphocytes. Protein is increased, but glucose is decreased. Similar to bacterial, fungal and TB. Only thing is, it is not the PMNs, but it is lymphocytes, which are predominantly increased. Then how about the viral? In viral, pressure is not really that increased. It is more or less normal. But lymphocyte is once more in viral. Protein is normal or increased, unlike bacterial where it is significantly increased. Protein. Glucose is normal. Unlike glucose is decreased whenever it is bacterial or fungal or TB is what you need to remember. All right, now. So this table, every book it is there, not necessarily Dr. Murli Bharadwaj's notes, but the point is uh, this kind of things, will you postpone it for uh, last moment? No. They should be in your DNA, RNA, mind, REM sleep also. Lymphocytosis kaota acha viral me. Lymphocytosis kaota acha fungal me. Glucose is low in case of bacterial, but glucose is not low in case of viral. That is the differentiator. These things should become part of your fabric of preparation. Don't underline them, don't even tick them, directly tick them in the brain. Okay. But there are some points you feel like ticking them for the last moment. Now comes brain abscess. What is the speciality of a brain abscess? Whenever you find a lesion like this, how do you know on MRI that it is a brain abscess? Contrast enhancement of the border. So any brain abscess is highly vascular. So if you pass contrast, that lead to contrast enhancement is what you need to remember. Brain abscess most commonly is because of viridan, streptococci, and staph aureus. There are two organisms you need to remember. Always there is an infection somewhere else and it will flow to the brain and lead to the abscess in the brain also. So what are the two organisms? Viridan, streptococci, and staph aureus lead to brain abscess. If it is a dental infection or an extraction, then oral anaerobes can lead to brain abscess. And there will be multiple abscesses usually whenever it is from the bacteremia. And ultimately, they will have a coalescence with one another and mix to become one. Then otitis media, mastoiditis can also lead to brain abscess, where typically temporal lobe and cerebellar abscess. Cerebellum and temporal lobe, temporal lobe. There are the two locations where otitis media, mastoiditis will gravitate. Easy to remember, no? Your temple is here, ear is here. Otitis media, mastoiditis go to temporal lobe and the uh, cerebellum. Surely sinusitis, dental infection, they lead to a brain abscess typically in the frontal lobe is what you need to 
remember. So now, doctor, toxoplasma. Toxoplasma already we discussed, no? Whenever HIV infection is there, toxoplasma, CNS toxoplasmiosis can occur. It can present like a space-occupying lesion. And what is the closest to differential diagnosis to toxoplasma? Kumma. I told this uh, four or five times, CNS lymphoma in HIV. For this, what will you do? Brain biopsy. For this uh, toxoplasma, what will you do? You will do pyramethamine trial for two to three weeks. You will see whether SOL decreased in size or not. If it did not decrease, then you will think of CNS lymphoma. Then you will do the brain biopsy is what you need to remember. So pneumonia is over, meningitis is over. Still what is left? UTI, osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis, what is the causative organism? Whenever doctor, in entrance exam, osteomyelitis came, if staph aureus is there in the options, that is the answer. So overall, staph aureus, but uh, Sexually active young male presenting with monoarticular effusion. Whenever we used to have a very, Desh Pandey used to be our professor, favorite question. Unilateral uh, monoarticular knee joint effusion is there in a young man. Have you asked him whether he has gone to the red light area? That is a very common cause for the sexually transmitted uh, um, cause. Gonorrhea. What? Nisseria gonorrhea is very common to lead to osteomyelitis and also lead to effusion in the joint. Septic arthritis is also very common whenever nisseria gonorrhea lead to the uh, osteomyelitis. Then sickle cell disease, salmonella, staph aureus, most common organism because they are capsulated organisms, is very common. Prosthetic joint replacement, very common. Tomorrow, Dr. Sai uh, uh, become an orthopedic surgeon, knee transplantations, cut, 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 cut. Entire carnal district, no knee left over. If you plan for that, then... Uh, Prosthetic joint replacement after you do, you should be careful. Staph aureus, staph epidermidis is very common. Then involvement of the vertebrae. Vertebral osteomyelitis, what are the organisms? Staph aureus, tuberculosis. When tuberculosis involves the spine, that is called POTS disease. Right? So POTS disease. Is it closed? Somebody knocked it. Yeah. Then cats and dog bites, pasturella maltosida. Then injection drug abuser, staph aureus. This many things you need to remember for the tomorrow's entrance. Each is an MCQ. Overall, staph aureus. Sexually active red light area, gonorrhea. Sickle cell, salmonella staph aureus. Prosthetic joint involvement, staph aureus and epidermidis. Vertebral involvement, TB, which is called POTS and also staph aureus. So, doctor, once more, do you want to mark this for the last moment revision? No. This is another thing that should uh, go into your body, into your DNA. Now, how do you identify osteomyelitis? Good to see Jitendra Varma and many more, our old friends who are all online. So tomorrow onwards, we plan to start one nice uh, thing. You're all in WhatsApp group, right? Eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 to 4, once more in the night, 10, 12 in the midnight, good night. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven quizzes, like what you play, no? Will be published. You get the link, you can start playing the quiz. 
Suppose neurology, we finished. Microbiology, we finished. We are finishing now. So you get 7 into 30 MCQs. Around 210 MCQs practice ho jayega. Or along with the friends you are fighting, uh, then it will be Josh Milega. 7 into 30 MCQs we will give if you are part of our WhatsApp study group. Right? And uh, you can, from all our WhatsApp study groups, people will get that link. They will participate from their mobile phone. 8, 10, 12, afternoon 2, 4, and night uh, 10 and 12. Because between 4 and 10, you are living with me. Finally, all your life is fully occupied by either MCQs or learning or revising. Next six months, we should work like maniacs. Remember, in life, achieving great things, you should not become a spectator. How long we will be spectators? Our personal achievement day should come. Right? How will that come? It has nothing to do with intelligence. It has more to do with emotional, emotional willpower. And to stay constantly in the same mission, same dream to become the topper. Is it really tough? No. 24,000 points to know them, 5,000 points to keep for last moment revision. And practicing every day 210 questions along with others in the uh, self style quiz. And then, uh, uh, what do you call uh, attending every day Dr. Murli Bharadwaj concentration camp. That's all. Very easy. Six months you do that, you will think 2022 is my year where I got the seat. And uh, if you really do effort in a focused manner, doctor, nothing in the world will stop you from winning. But unfortunately, what happens is, there are wonderful video libraries available in the learning gaps. But we don't get motivation to revise them. Because you need a study partner, you need a gang with them, you are studying together. That is the need of the hour. Okay. So thanks very much to all of you for coming to the session. Please do come every day. Yeah. We'll study together. Now, osteomyelitis. What does it lead to? Elevated ESR, C-reactive protein. They are typically elevated, but they're all sensitive. High ESR, CRP, but ESR is a very non-specific indicator. You have anemia, you'll have high ESR. Anemia lead to high ESR. Polycythemia lead to low ESR. Remember, anemia will make your blood become very thin. A thinned blood will have higher sedimentation rate. High ESR is typically a feature of anemia. So high ESR, CRP is very sensitive but not specific. Radiographs are not sensitive. After everything burnt and you ended up in chronic osteomyelitis, humanity, then only changes will appear in the uh, radiograph, x-rays. The most sensitive thing, if you want to detect acute osteomyelitis is MRI. If you want to detect acute infection. And biopsy or aspiration with the culture need to be done in that osteomyelitic area to identify the organism is what you need to remember. Next comes the Kogzaki virus. Type A lead to hand, foot, mouth disease. What are this oval shaped vesicles on the palms and the soles, vesicles and ulcers in the oral mucosa that is called herpangina. First time Kogzaki virus, if I remember properly, I learnt it in third year MBBS. I was writing a 5000 MCQ review on Anantanaran microbiology in uh, third year MBBS when I was, which was published, very popular book. Paras Medical published, those days published. Way back in 1993. 
I have never seen a Kogzaki virus until my son, that to my younger son, somewhere in 2014, actually had hand foot to mouth disease. I wondered and asked the dermatologist, my classmate, Dr. Sunita Reddy is a very popular dermatologist. Uh, does hand foot to mouth really exist even uh, in modern time? What modern time? Still we are in the same, uh, what you call viral time. So how many years I took to actually see the first case? 93 to 2014 means uh, 21 years as much as Nelson Mandela went to jail. But I had been teaching Kamsaki, foot to mouth, hand to foot to mouth. I also answered the same question when I became the first ranker in the, uh, my days of PG medical entrance. So what happens is a lot of things are all imagined. Repeatedly imagined, there is no other way. Right? Until entrance is over. So doctor, hand foot to mouth is Kamsaki virus type A. Then human herpes virus 6, what is this called? Roseola exanthem subitum. Asymptomatic rose-colored macules appear on the body after several days of high fever. Fever ends, rose begins. Fever end, then the rash begins. It can also lead, present like febrile seizure and usually affects the infants. So, roseola exanthin subitim, human herpes virus 6 and typically fever ends, rose begins. Don't forget, favorite MCQ of the examiner. Measles, measles is rubiola, confluent rash, beginning on the head and moving down, centrifugal. Before the measles, you get cough, coryza and conjunctivitis. Always a very important rule, doctor. Unless there is, I mean, conjunctivitis is a very common associated finding in measles along with the skin rash. All skin rashes don't lead to cough, coryza and conjunctivitis as a companion. Then complex spots on the buccal mucosa. Then comes the parvo virus. The kid is asking, come on, man, if you have guts, diagnose my cheeks, which are looking like slapped, but nobody could dare to slap me. I am the MCQ in your exam. If you don't recognize what, why my slapped cheeks, you get negative marks, right? So slapped cheek appearance, erythema, infectiosum, fifth disease caused by parvovirus B19. What is the effect of parvovirus B19 on bone marrow? You remember? Sickle cell anemia patients, Suddenly, if they develop a plastic crisis, it is because of a plastic anemia. It is due to parvovirus B19. Forgotten, Gajani syndrome, right? Just to do revision of that. Then comes rubella. Rubella, very important thing is post-auricular lymphadenopathy. It starts like macule, papules begin the head and move down. They will undergo desquamation, fine desquamating truncal rash. Very important, post-auricular lymphadenopathy is a feature of rubella is what you need to remember. Streptococcus pyogenes. What do you want to remember, doctor? Good to see Mohan Babu Hemant. Many of our old uh, uh, gang leaders, of, uh, we were all a mafia gang last year while we were preparing together. Uh, good, good doctor, good. So, teaching every day has a therapeutic effect. It prevents dementia in the aging teacher, right? And it is a good vocal exercise so that you don't get laryngeal carcinoma. So, good. Streptococcus pyogenes causes scarlet fever. Sotro, circumboral pelar, group A streptococcal rash, which is sandpaper like in consistency. I earlier showed you one illustration also. And erythrogenic toxin, what is this called? Strawberry tongue, which is seen in scarlet fever. So these are all the buzzwords, doctor. Sandpaper like rash. 
then erythrogenic toxin, strawberry tongue, scarlet fever. You should not basically forget. Then varicella joster is what? Chicken pox reactivated. There is a, in the dermatomal pattern, there is a development of vesicular rash begins on the trunk. Slowly it will spread to the face, extremities. What is that called? Ophthalmic division you get, no? Trigeminal neuralgia is what you can develop with varicella joster. And it's a pleomorphic rash. Vesicles and some of the rash will be papular. All forms, pleomorphic rash in various stages is what you find in varicella joster. A lot of times what happens, no doctor? I remember one of our uh, very good uh, patient, uh, he is a diabetic. Severe uh, right uh, hypochondriac pain. Oh, pain doctor, pain doctor, pain doctor. They did ultrasound, no gallstone, nothing is there. They did full ultrasound. Analgesic was given, it is not relieving. A lot of times, in fact, sometimes pain starts, pain of the varicella joster virus, before onset of rash. I said, it looks like herpes joster, varicella joster. Uh, so better we start a cyclovid, uh, even before the rash begins. My resident was betting. No, sir, how can that be? You are completely. Next day, he developed a rash. So we used to do nice bets with our residents that uh, we want to uh, bet what is the diagnosis, right? So uh, sometimes rash, before rash only, pain in the dermatomal pattern, whenever somebody is having, no, you should think of varicella joxa, which is chicken pox, reactivate. Then very commonly cystitis. What is cystitis, doctor? Bladder. You have urethritis, soft urethra. Urethra is different from bladder. I think you know that. Very good. Bladder. Then there is a ureter. Ureter is different from bladder because ureter connects the bladder with the kidney. <laughs> right? Huh. So if the bladder is inflamed, what will happen? Little urine collects also. It leads to pain and you have to run to washroom. So dysuria. Painful urination, frequency of urine, frequent urination, urgency, little filling make you run, suprapubic pain, and you find WBCs, not WBC cast. If WBC cast is found, that means it is arising from kidney. That means that guy is having glomerulonephritis. But this is only purely WBCs, not cast. Casts are there means it is pyelonephritis, renal infection. Not glomerulonephritis, pyelonephritis. Huh? Pyelonephritis. But uh, only WBC sees cystitis. And why do you get cystitis? Commonly, urethra to bladder. From urethra to bladder. Typically, in the case of the females, the vagina and anus are closer to each other. So all the anal soiling will cause the infection to enter vagina and easily go to urethra to bladder leading to cystitis and that from the bladder it can go to the kidney and lead to the development of pyelonephritis cystitis can go to pyelonephritis how do you identify pyelonephritis that means kidney got pus kidney got bacteria which ascended up how do you know patients have fever chills severe flank pain costovertebral angle tenderness loin may costovertebral tenderness you do a little knock, ah, patient will cry. Costovertebral tenderness, hematuria, WBC cars. These are all the features of pyelonephritis is what you need to remember. Cystitis is 10 times more common in females because of their short urethra and uh, fecal microbiota can ascend up from the urethra to the bladder is what you need to remember. Now, the risk factors for the cystitis. If there is any obstruction like a kidney stone, enlarged prostate, 
then the urine drainage will become affected from the bladder right kidney ke upar kaun hai ureter end i mean bladder ke upar bladder ke upar kaun hai kidney bladder ke baad mein kaun hai urethra and prostate so any enlarged prostate or renal stones kidney surgery any catheterization and congenital malformation what is that called visico ureteral reflux that means urine came from ureter into bladder but there is a small valve that prevents urethral valve if that urethral valve is uh, affected then the urine will gush back into the ureter and backwards visico ureter reflux then diabetes pregnancy very common diabetes so always remember doctor elderly diabetic female recurrent uti whenever they are there what is the most important thing that you will do recurrent uti you are giving antibiotics resolving once more urine culture positive you should always do look for urethral meatal stenosis when the meatus is narrowed then urine will uh, collect behind it it is unable to pass out easily and urethral meatal stenosis is very common because of the underlying diabetes so any elderly person diabetic especially females recurrent uti not responding to antibiotics means you should always do a genital urinary examination to look for urethral meatal stenosis so they pass a catheter and sometimes you need to dilate that also recurrent uti means you should always look get a ct and look for any abnormal tract any abnormality in the uh, genital urinary tract you need to evaluate otherwise what happens is this recurrent uti if not handled well lead to sepsis in the elderly lady and they will pop out because of that sepsis that's a very common reason for death in elderly women diabetic uh, women is what you need to remember then comes very good to see mohan babu is saying sir i am doing md microbiology in all india institute bhuvaneshwar <laughs> very good very good so these are all our friends uh, sitting like you once upon a time and uh, we had no other work uh, being unemployed md general medicine but to spend good time with you so one day girija will come and say sir i am doing uh, md gynops in all india institute of medical sciences new delhi Huh? very nice that you are still vibrating with the same old filthish jokes of the climb class huh? yeah we have no other work to do right so jokes are old but the students are new so that's a inspiration for the new jokes so treating patients also doctor is life just uh, especially md general medicine life passes like that because your patients keep telling a lot of stories and all those stories will be written actually in the horizon right so when you reach 40 45 you know you heard like a catholic priest who heard the confessions you heard so many people stories how happened what happened etc and uh, that makes you to practice every day right so that's the reason we spend a lot of time in history so we know the diagnosis in the first two lines of history still we will ask so many questions to listen their history what was their life story that led them to reach this point right and that that is all makes you a better clinician as the day passes now e coli is the leading cause of uti and the colonies uh chungu mungu is asking hi sir how to prepare for next next star need anything doctor daily be part of uh, dr murli bharadwaj concentration camp of revision 24000 points 
ideally my my plan is first year mbbs only seriously 8 months if you sit you will revise there is nothing that you will become something special by the time you reach final year first year only because that time also you have to imagine this time also you have to imagine only chediyak higashi syndrome macrophyte dysfunction ecom1 receptor everything imagination only no doctor whether you are in first year or in uh, final year how does it uh, differ first year only if you finish this 24000 points second year onwards you can start treating people and start applying from this 24000 points so chungu mungu please uh, be part of our whatsapp study group 9000868356 to get the link of the whatsapp study group and be part so probably girija is thinking where are you sir you would have met me in the first year right by now i would have been a different human being right at least tell you are a daughter when your daughter joins first year mbbs introduce to me so that uh, i will make sure that she learns from first year i will be probably 78 or 80 year old that time but yeah cystitis will be that only icam one receptors will be that only maybe corona will be passing through 100 variant <laughs> so yes e coli is the leading cause of uti pink lactose fermenters on mekanki agar are the e coli now we are talking about the organisms leading to uti leukocyte esterase activity will be typically positive that's what we need to remember right leukocyte esterase positivity is an evidence of wbc activity in e coli then staphylococcus saprophyticus is the second leading cause of uti particularly young sexually active female it does not mean old sexually active female it does not lead to but more common in young sexually active female then diagnostic marker is what positive nitrate test because it lead to urinary reduction i mean reduction of urinary nitrate uh positive nitrate test so staphylococcus saprophyticus don't forget similarly pink lactose fermenter on mekong kz e coli and leukocyte esterase positivity is e coli is what you need to remember then comes plebeisiella pneumonia very good chungu mungu is in second year i mean second year is very good i have uh, one of my friend who is uh, one of my student dr tirumal tirumal is a top neurosurgeon now in uh, nizam institute of medical sciences from first year we used to talk together in those days on the mobile phone uh, beginning days and uh, after every day after studying he used to call and say sir today i studied this topic that topic like that those days in varangal kakthiya medical college we used to have a center way back that was i am talking about uh, 19 uh, sorry 2008 or so later he got an ms general surgery after that he did mcs neurosurgery and after that he is now a consultant and he is my co-founder in uh, incus so he brought uh, around 3 uh, crores of funding when i started uh, incus so i always tell proudly in the board meeting the top neurosurgeon tirumal once upon a time was my student right from first year like chungu mungu chungu mungu you are from which part of the country my dear so good doctor so klebsiella pneumonia it is the third leading cause of uti after e coli and staph saprophyticus it's like olympics gold medal silver medal bronze medal first is e coli second is staph saprophyticus third is Klebsiella pneumonia. Don't think Klebsiella is pneumonia. So will it cause uh, urinary tract infection? 
one of our friend used to say sir how can smoking can cause bladder cancer i said why it will not cause because smoke cannot get into bladder no sir <laughs> no sir smoking will release carcinogens those carcinogens will cause bladder cancer smoke need not go into bladder right ha huh. so klebsiella pneumonia then it has a mucoid capsule very gelatinous mucoid capsule with viscous colonies that is the nature of klebsiella pneumonia is what you need to remember serratia marasens you remember in the lung it lead to come on in lung what does serratia marasens lead to pseudo hemoptysis right hemoptysis correct don't worry one more time i will remind next time sir sir i say you will say ha uh, yesterday sir, omalizumab huh omalizumab huh asthma ah uh, ige ah uh, you said the same no what is that endothelin receptor antagonist bo centan is endothelin and that's easy to remember percentan but please revise all those points given in the notes and eh? so doctor uh very good mohan babu says anti ige in asthma very good very good doctor chungu mungu is from karnataka good doctor so please come every day chungu uh without chungu mungu my life will be very udas ban jayega ha chungu mungu aaye to hum bahut maze mein padhai karenge ha then uh, um uh, yeah so serratia marasens produce a red pigment and often healthcare associated like uh, you put a folic catheter it is very drug resistant these are the things to know about serratia then enterococci which are the part of the gut they also can cause healthcare associated drug resistant uti proteus mirabilis what is the speciality of it whenever it is swimming it lead to because of its motility it will lead to swarming type of a growth on agar swarming growth on agar is proteus mirabilis and what does it lead to struvite stones big to big stones like this and proteus mirabilis produce urease just like our helicobacter pylori right very few urease producing organism tomorrow examiner is going to give you the stag horn calliculi and typically how will be the ph of proteus mirabilis associated urinary ph alkaline ph will be produced other other things other stones are all produced in acidic urine but struvite stones are produced in the alkaline urine is what you need to remember so there is one more thing for you to remember doctor how are these big big stones are looking like this are these are called struvite stones stag horn calliculi stag stag is like deer no that uh, stag horn calliculi and pseudomonas aeruginosus it lead to blue green pigment blue green pigment fruity odor right usually healthcare associated and drug resistant is pseudomonas uti now comes bacterial vaginosis there is no inflammation in bacterial vaginosis remember it is not vaginitis it is vag vaginosis that's the reason they didn't call it as vaginitis thin white discharge with fishy odor here it is fruity odor right 
clue cells please don't forget doctor so this is the normal vaginal cell then all these uh, stuck with uh, organisms will lead to clue cell ph is more than 4.5 you do whiff test on koh and treatment is metronidazole or clindamycin is what you need to remember then trichomonas lead to vaginitis strawberry cervix because of those punctate hemorrhages it looks like a describing uh, cervix as strawberry cervix right then uh, frothy yellow green foul smelling discharge motile pear shaped pear shaped trichomonas right so all this everything related to food strawberry is food fruit yadar is food then pear thindi pothulu bolthena uh hunger poppers become ultimately pathologists to describe everything like fruits ph more than 4.5 and metronidazole and also treat sexual partner because he is the part of the crime right he is a crime partner then comes candida candida classical is what doctor milk 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 thick white cottage cheese discharge pseudo hyphae normal ph and treatment you will give azoles but canada classical is what itching 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 and if you relieve candida itching by giving a good fluconazole patient will uh, pray you ba wow, thank you doctor so nice uh, treatment you have given then come chancroid it is a painful genital ulcer lot of exudate and chancroid lesions can occur in the female genitalia also hemophilus ducreae how will you remember it is painful ducreae makes you cry because it is painful so painful is ducreae chancroid genital ulcer these four are like uh, the four uh, uh, most important things doctor and entrance may syphilis gonorrhea chancroid lymphogranuloma venerum right and granuloma inguinal definitely examiner will ask which is painful which is painless which is soft which is hard ulcer you have to be 100% sure then granuloma inguinal it is painless how is the color if you go to mutton shop if you do beefy red बीफ को कट करके वो रेड कितना रहता है द पेनाइल अल्सर ऑल्सो विल बी दट मच रेड इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेम्बर देन ग्रैनुलोमा इंग्विनेल इज कॉन्सिड बाई क्लबीसीला विच इज कैलिमेटो बैक्टीरियम ग्रैन्युलोमेटोस एंड वॉट यू सी बाइपलॉर स्टेनिंग डोनवानी बॉडीज दे आर कॉल्ड एस inside the cytoplasm you will see on microscopy and it is sexually transmitted then comes lymphogranuloma venerum but this is a painless please remember painless genital ulcer but lymphadenopathy is painful lymph nodes are painful but genital ulcer is not painful and those painful lymph nodes inguinally are called bubos and chlamydia trachomatis l1 to l3 it is also sexually transmitted is what you need to remember then comes the gonorrhea urethritis cervicitis with the discharge which is creamy purulent discharge that's the reason don't uh, date a dermatologist you have gone for a date and uh, honey what kind of uh, consistency you want sir for the soup the gonorrheal purulent discharge creamy color <laughs> please serve it <laughs> so creamy purulent discharge miseria gonorrhea it is also std then chlamydia chlamydia is urethritis cervicitis epididymitis 
conjunctivitis, reactive arthritis, and pelvic inflammatory disease. Full. It got seat in gynecology, obstetrics, ophthalmology, rheumatology, and orthopedics also. Is chlamydia. Need be it often. Then chlamydia, trachomatis, sexually transmitted. Then condylomata, acuminata. These are all genital wards. And what do you find, doctor? The other day I have shown you coilocytes. A cell with a clear halo-like uh, cytoplasm is called coilocyte. Coilocytes are what you find in condylomata, acuminata, infected tissues on histology. Once more, if you miss that, just go back uh, in that slides, it is there. Human papilloma virus 6 and 11 are associated. Then comes herpes genitalis, herpes. It is painful, penile, vulvar, cervical, vesicles, anywhere herpes is vesicles. And HSV2 and less commonly HSV1. Generally HSV2 is below belt, HSV1 is above belt. And it is also sexually transmitted. Ha, ah, very good. I'm waiting for this. These are called, what are they? Clear cytoplasm, coilocytes. Where do you get them? Human papilloma virus associated genital warts, HPV 6 and HPV 11. Please don't those room numbers. Then comes treponema pallidum. Primary syphilis, secondary and tertiary. Primary syphilis like this is painless chancre. Secondary syphilis, you get fever, skin rash, lymphadenopathy. And in the mucous areas, you get lesions called condylomata lata. So don't confuse them with the condyloma of HPV. Right? They are, the, what you get in uh, secondary syphilis is condylomata lata is what you need to remember. Then tertiary syphilis lead to gammas, argyle Robertson pupil, aortitis, generalized paresis, etc. Now tell me, doctor, Argyle Robertson pupil is because of the lesion of which nucleus? Uh, that is uh, medial longitudinal fasciculus, internuclear ophthalmoplegia. That is a different story. Pretectal nucleus in the midbrain to Edinger Westfall nucleus to ciliary ganglion. To the sphincter pupillae, you forgot, doctor. Should not, doctor. Hmm? Pretectal to Edinger Westfall to ciliary ganglion to short ciliary nerves going to the sphincter pupillae. So, pretectal nuclei are damaged by your syphilis. That's the reason accommodation present, but reflex absent. It hence called prostitute pupil. Because a prostitute will accommodate a client, but she won't say, ooh, ah, ouch, like a regular uh, romantic uh, sex. So, reflex absent, no reflexes, come on, carry on and pay me the money and go. So, that is what accommodation present, she accommodates, but reflex is absent, is what you need to remember. Then, trichomoniasis lead to strawberry cervix, motile on wet prep. Vaginitis, it is also sexually transmitted. HBV is also sexually transmitted. Then finally comes torch group of infections. Totally, how many points are there? 20, 20. 20 more points, eh? Ah. Right? So, yeah. You still have energy? Huh? We'll finish. Micro over and then we will dig it into the backyard coffin and then say goodbye. But need to revise the 600 points. No problem. Next doctor, torch group of infections. Typically they pass from mother to fetus, transplacentally, sometimes by vaginal delivery also, especially herpes simplex among the torch. H is herpes simplex. It comes vaginal delivery. Whereas toxoplasma, rubella, cytomegalovirus, they all 
happen across placenta. Then there are a lot of non-specific symptoms whenever torch infection occurs in the newborn. Hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, thrombocytopenia, and growth restriction. So these are the IUGR, microcephaly, very common with torch infections. Streptococcus agalactosy, it is what? Group B streptococci. E. coli, listeria, they all lead to meningitis. Parvovirus B19, you need to remember because it can lead to hydrospitalis, it can lead to aplastic anemia in sickle cell, and it also lead to slap cheap appearance of erythema. Infect shows them. Correct? Hmm. Then toxoplasma gondii. Mary has a cat. The cat has the toxo. Toxo passed through. Cat feces or ingestion of undercooked meat. Most of this already we finished in the earlier uh, part. Last final points. Usually toxoplasma is asymptomatic. It can lead to lymphadenopathy. And it can, in children, what does toxoplasma lead? Very important uh, combination, doctor. Chorioretinitis can be due to toxoplasma. It can lead to hydrocaphalus, what you can see here. Hydrocaphalus, toxoplasma. Intracranially, it can lead to calcifications. And blueberry mufflin rash. So you should know how the blueberries look like. Earlier we discussed blueberry mufflin rash. Then how about rubella? We are talking about the torch group of infections. It can be from the mother to the baby to the respiratory droplets. Mother can show rubella manifestations in the form of rash, lymphadenopathy, polyarthritis, polyarthralgia. But when it goes to the baby, then the neonate can show classic triad of rubella. What are they? Cataract, deafness, and PDA. Paid inductor arteriosis and the blueberry mufflin rash also in rubella. Then cytomegalovirus. Organ transplant recipients get CMV, common. Post-transplant infections may, it's once more divided into early infections after transplant and later. We will take it up uh, the discussion during transplant. But for now, remember, organ transplants may, post-transplant you will get CMV. Then generally mother will be asymptomatic or she may have mononucleosis. You remember? Epstein-Barr virus can lead to mononucleosis, CMV can lead to mononucleosis. And the neonate will get hearing loss, seizures, petechial rash, blueberry mufflin region, chorioretinitis, very importantly, periventricular calcifications are very common with CMV. Then comes the HIV. It is maternally acquired through sexual contact, or through needle stick. Mother may have variable presentation depending on the CD4 count. And a baby with neo, neonatal HIV is very common, especially orphans. There are a lot of orphans uh, who have uh, uh, HIV. Our Dr. Varsha is there, no? Varsha's daddy is a top pediatrician, is a great philanthropist and uh, humanitarian. He treats lot of orphans free, being a pediatrician, complete treatment. And lot of orphans, he says, HIV very rampant in Andhra, Telangana, Maharashtra, Karnataka. So, uh, and also commercial sex worker, when they produce babies, there are also a good number of cases, HIV positive. So they're all, world is more cruel than... Uh, they are all very well protected world out there. Little neat PG, we need to remember a few points, means we'll keep crying there. But world otherwise is very cruel, very difficult, very challenging. So every day when we see the patients, no, we will be looking at their life, we will be knowing that, my God, we are very much privileged, we will feel, right? When they be, listen to their life stories. So, Recurrent infections, chronic diarrhea can be presentation of HIV in pediatrics. 
then herpes simplex virus usually asymptomatic or it can lead to vesicular lesions and in neonates it can lead to meningoencephalitis and herpetic vesicular lesions syphilis gandhi ji's three monkeys chedu vinavaddu chedu chudavaddu chedu maatladavaddu so don't see evil don't visit, speak evil don't hear evil so you need to remember cradle naru deafness don't listen evil then hachisan's teeth notched teeth in the mouth are called hachisan teeth so don't open mouth so don't speak then also in the eye they develop interstitial uh, retinopathy so that lead to development of blindness so chedu maatladavaddu i mean chedu chudavaddu you can't see they become blind so neonatal syphilis can lead to stillbirth hydrops fetalis notched teeth saddle nose short maxilla saber shin shin saber shin and krillner eight deafness anything can happen now comes pelvic inflammatory disease common diagnosis and what are the organisms chlamydia neisseria neisseria is acute chlamydia is subacute and often undiagnosed and severe tenderness never try to venture out to do a parvaginal examination in a woman with pelvic inflammatory disease what will she do you she will hit you and then you will touch the chandelier that severe tenderness on parvaginal examination is called as chandelier sign in pelvic inflammatory this is the reason is if you if she kicks you you will go and catch the chandelier then chlamydia trachomatis if i say most common bacterial sexually transmitted infection means chlamydia it lead to cervical motion tenderness adnexal tenderness purulent cervical discharge tella batta purulent cervical discharge and it lead to salpingitis endometritis hydrosalpings tubo ovarian abscess anything can occur with ha uh, so when we were in uh, final year gynecology exam they gave uh, um tvo abscess nobody know what is this tvo abscess you were thinking maybe we need to leave this uh, short answer question then finally of course if all the class doesn't know what will we do by consensus we will ask find out uh, uh, what is tvo abscess and our invigilator is a physiology madam she also don't know what is tvo abscess then she went uh, in those days all uh, no mobiles no gynecology professor what is tvo abscess all students are asking in final year exam tubo ovarian abscess first time I, i will always remember tvo abscess tvo is tubo ovarian abscess chlamydia trachomatis we don't know anything about it still we wrote the paper because there is an abscess in the tube abscess in the ovary because it is a inflammatory disease because abscess is there we will you will find wbcs <laughs> what else you will find <laughs> so five six lines if you write finish so salpingitis what are the problems of salpingitis commonly salpingitis can lead to ectopic pregnancy infertility chronic pelvic pain adhesions all these are the problems with salpingitis then whenever gonococcus lead to pelvic inflammatory disease that gonococcemia can go to the liver lead to liver capsule is there no doctor it all get inflamed peri hepatitis it is called that time it is called fitz hug curtis syndrome aur ek bar bolo girija fitz hug curtis syndrome and uh, if you look at the liver capsule this kind of violin string adhesions of the peritoneum they look like violin strings to this guy 
so he had a fruity adar ordered for a thick creamy soup uh, and he had a strawberry finally violin should be there so that is uh fitzer hugh curtis syndrome of gonococcus so this is a dynamic ct scan where you can see the hepatic margin is all what dr opacity can you appreciate that is because of the peri hepatitis caused by fitz hugh curtis syndrome is what you need to remember this is another thing you can see this entire capsule is opaque because of fitz hugh curtis syndrome then e coli leads to common healthcare associated infections are what wound infection is due to staph aureus suppose you have done a surgical wound uh, that got infected staph aureus tomorrow girija will be doing uh, delivery and uh, then she will be coming how is the wound is it okay or not she will do a hysterectomy and check whether any pus is there right wound infections are part of a surgeon's life so staph aureus you need to remember then e coli is another cause of the healthcare associated uti then this already we discussed you know doctor should the membrane as colitis clostridium difficile watery diarrhea and antibiotic use aspiration pneumonia is anaerobic organisms right lower lobe is the common area then decubitus ulcers so tomorrow as a geriatric practitioner one of the biggest challenges the old man who was a ias officer ultimately ended up in stroke and bedridden leading to decubitus ulcers right i have one old judge uh, one of my patients he had gone to ventilator came out and people did request me 84 year old so with all decubitus ulcers he was saying can you give the final judgment of my life to how to pass away this life please do something to do that doctor i said law is not letting to do euthanasia at least in india right so he gave judgments on lot of people he is a very top judge he was the high court judge so there's a big challenge decubitus ulcers staph aureus gram negative or anaerobes like bacteroides prevotella fusobacterium all these negative gram negative anaerobes are a big challenge erythema tenderness induration drainage from the surgical wound sites if you pass intramuscular catheter be very sure central lines etc staph aureus staph epidermidis long term staph epidermidis and always look for erythema induration tenderness drainage on the axis site you need to look for then whenever you put the patient on ventilator then you get pseudomonas aeruginosa klebsiella acinetobacter and staph aureus always a patient on ventilator you will always be regularly checking the x-rays to find any new infiltrate if it is pseudomonas there is a sweet odor you remember sweet fruity odor then hbv hcv in uh, renal dialysis renal dialysis patients hbv hcv very rampant then catheterization lead to proteus e coli klebsiella leading to dysuria flank pain pyelonephritis cost vertebral tenderness then water aerosols coming from the air coolers you, should, you will think about legionella pneumophila is what you need to remember so this is how typically a legionella pneumophila infection because of the water cooler is all that you need to remember so that brings us to the end of the wonderful evening doctor still microbiology is not over immunology is there there are about 150 points in immunology right yesterday only i realized it so immunology also uh, we need to do the revision shaker says sir you are a excellent healthy motivator abba thank you shaker for the compliment and for attending the session right and uh, quickly i want to show you something doctor 
Uh, I want to quickly show you something. Share, uh, share screen, okay? Let's share uh, entire screen. Okay. Very good. So you need to know that a lot of students ask, sir, after the session is over, you removed the video. So where do you find the video? So if you go to the online MBBS.com, we started something called 24,000 high yield uh, uh, facts revision. So once you click on this, here you have cardiology, then uh, microbiology, neurology, what all that we discussed. Once more, instead of long, long videos, we have divided that into first point, second point, third point, fourth to sixth point, like that. And you have the notes. So notes on your side with these points. Lot of these videos you need not listen if you understand the notes. But if you have if those points in the notes which you feel that you need to do the revision, please do uh, revise in the video. So this is a simple way to crack the entrance. Every day come to the class, right? And uh, uh, and also, you will find this entire PowerPoint. The PowerPoint and the video, both are available. PowerPoint means all images, everything are also available. But otherwise, the notes is always handy because it's easy to tick, no? PowerPoint you can follow. So that's how every day let us meet, study together and become strong. So tomorrow what we will do? Um, reproductive. And at physio, biochem, everything we will start tomorrow. Thanks for patient listening. Share this uh, um, YouTube channel link to all your friends. Thank you.